When we start specifying the simple gas plant, we should first go to the environment to select a property package and the components that will be available. If you aren't certain which property package to use, you can right-click and select the What's This option that appears. For our case, the hint says that gas processing should use either Ping Robinson or SRK. Let's select Ping Robinson. We should probably rename our environment so that we'll remember more about it. Let's call this one PR. From the Components tab, we should now select all of the components to be used in the simulation. Typing the name in the Name field will filter the components in the list. If the name matches one in the list exactly, hitting Enter on your keyboard will install that component to the environment. Here, I have installed Nitrogen. You may also double-click on a component when it appears in the list to select it, such as here with Carbon Dioxide. Continuing to select the components, Methane, Ethane, Propane, Isobutane, Normal Butane, Isopentane, Normal Pentane, and Normal Hexane, it is important to note that the name of the component here is what will show throughout the project and in the final reports generated through Promax. If you are required to show the components as C1, C2, etc., then you will need to select those aliases right now. Once you have these components selected, click OK at the bottom of the screen. We can now begin inputting the information given to us. If we double click on the inlet stream, we can type in the temperature, 95 degrees Fahrenheit, then the pressure, 200 PSIA, and the flow rate of 5 million standard cubic feet per day. You can see that additional options are being grayed out as we set conditions for the stream. The composition is set in the next tab, and you must either double click in the grid here, or select the Specify button to input the composition. We can now type in the given values for the composition. Once you have typed these values in, select the basis. You can see that the flow rate options are not available. This is because we already set the flow rate at 5 million standard cubic feet per day. If we had not done this, we could set the individual component flow rates here. I will select Mole Fraction and then OK. It then asks if I would like to normalize the composition. Because the values I typed in do not add up to exactly 100%, Promax must normalize the numbers to make exactly 100%. This is your chance to correct any errors you might have made when typing in the values. We have them specified correctly, so we'll select Yes. Once we have finished this, we can look at our flow sheet and see that the stream has turned green. This is now a fully specified stream, and we're ready to move on. The next block is the mixer. For this to solve, we must know all of the inlets to the mixer. We have one finished, but the other is not. You have a few choices here. You can supply a recycle guess in the recycle guess stream. If you set the temperature, pressure, flow rate, and composition that you believe the stream might be, Promax will use that as a starting point. The second option is to disconnect the recycle guest stream from the mixer temporarily. Promax can then solve the mixer because what goes in from the inlet stream is what will come out in stream 2. I'm going to choose the third option and specify a zero flow rate from the recycle guest stream. Promax is smart enough to know that if there is no flow, it doesn't need to know the pressure, temperature, or composition. It's worth noting that the shortcut will only work in a few instances, and most of the time a full, educated guess is required for the recycle guess stream. We can now execute the mixer by going to the Promax menu and selecting Execute Block. Our gas is now fed into the compressor. We know the outlet pressure should be 560 PSIG, so we can set that in the discharge stream. It is a property of the stream, so it should be set in the stream. The stream still has blanks in it, where you could type in an additional specification, such as temperature. Even though it is tempting to do so, the temperature is really a result of the efficiency of the compressor. It is not anything directly controlled by choice, and so we shouldn't set it. It is very easy to accidentally force your compressor to have a greater than 100% or less than 0% efficiency on accident if you set this temperature. We are told that the polytropic efficiency is 75%. As this is a property of the compressor, we should set that in the compressor. It is found under the Property Data tab here. Once we have made all of the required specifications, we can then have Promax execute the current block by pressing the Execute button here in the Project Viewer. Next is the air cooler. We're given that the outlet temperature is 110 degrees Fahrenheit. Again, this is a property of the stream, so we will set it in Stream 4. 
This time, the stream gives us the opportunity to set the pressure if we would like. Since this pressure is determined by the design of the exchanger and the inlet pressure, it is much better to set the pressure drop in the exchanger. If we change the upstream conditions of the project, Promax can then set the downstream conditions more effectively. Under the Process Data tab of the exchanger, we can set the pressure drop at 5 psi. We can verify it's giving the results we expect by hovering over the outlet stream and checking the temperature, pressure, and flow rates. If they aren't what you expect, you can make any changes required. For the first cooler, let's set the pressure drop first. This is a two-sided exchanger, so there are two process streams that will each have a pressure drop. These are found in the Process Data tab again, but notice in the Grouping option, there is now a choice to change between side A and side B. Let's set 5 psi for both sides. We're also given that the end approach temperature is 30 degrees in this exchanger. We can set that under the Heat Transfer Grouping option here. In the second cooler, let's again set the two pressure drops each at 5 psi. We are also told that stream 6 is at 36 degrees. Another exchanger is next, this one with one side, and so one pressure drop. I'll use 5 psi yet again. Also, we're told that the outlet temperature is 20 degrees. This specification is to be set in the downstream process stream, so I can select the down arrow to go downstream. The low temperature separator is in the process to separate the gas from the liquid formed at this temperature. We will assume the separation is at the current conditions, so we should double click on the separator, go to the process data tab, and set a pressure drop of zero. Promex does not automatically set a zero pressure drop for you, since it is most often not right. We are also given an outlet pressure from the JT valve of 200 PSIG, which is a property of the outlet stream, not of the JT valve, so it is set in the stream. You can select multiple blocks by clicking and dragging a selection box around them, and select Execute Block to have Promax only solve those blocks, if possible. When we double-click on the tower, we are brought to a dialog that we must set some information for before we can move on. At a minimum, we must tell Promax the number of stages in the tower. This should be 8 for this case. You can also choose from this screen whether you would like additional stages to show on the flow sheet, if you would prefer the column to be numbered from the bottom to top, and what type of column it is. We will leave everything at its default with 8 stages. Once it creates the tower, we can specify some more information for it or modify the current settings for it. Under the Connections tab is the option to add or remove stages. If you right-click on a stage, you can add additional stages. I can add two stages like this if I wish. Afterwards, I can remove stages by right-clicking on the stage I wish to remove and selecting Delete Stage. I can also hold down the Control button and select multiple stages to delete. The location you select determines which stages are deleted or where the stages are added. This will matter if your column has any side draws or pump arounds, but does not in this case. The Process Data tab gives control over the type of tower we are modeling. We will use an equilibrium vapor liquid tower. Verify that the reboiler is associated with the column here. If not, select the exchanger being used as the reboiler from the list. The Stage Data tab then allows you to set the column's pressure profile. This must be set for all columns, or it cannot solve. I will simply set the pressure change here at 5 psi. It will look for the feed stream pressures and adjust the column pressure accordingly. If I change this to show PSIG, I can see that the feed on stage 1 is exactly 195 psig. This screen also gives the option to show any stages on the flow sheet by checking any of these boxes. The specification for the column can be set in the next tab. Promax has created one titled Boil-Up Ratio 1. This is analogous to a reflux ratio for a condenser that calculates the amount of vapor boiled back up into the column compared to the amount of fluid exiting the reboiler. This is a natural variable for Promax, as it is easily bound between all of the flow and none of the flow. Promax will then use this to find any other specifications you make behind the scenes. For this case, we'll create a new specification to meet the 0.1 ethane to propane ratio in the bottom's liquid we're asked for. First, select Add from here. The type of specification will be a component ratio, and we can give this a name, such as C2 to C3 ratio. The dialog that appears is set up as the numerator here on the left, and the denominator here 
on the right for the ratio. Select the stage Reboiler and the light liquid phase for one side and Promax assumes we want the same for the other side. We can change the second side afterwards if we need to. Choose standard liquid volumetric fractions from the list here. Next, choose ethane for the numerator and propane for the denominator. Type in the target value of 0.1 and leave the tolerance blank. Promax has very good tolerance values built in, so it is our advice to never type a value here. Select Active and then OK. You can now see that the degrees of freedom is zero. Select Execute and the column should solve to your defined specification. Closing back to the flow sheet, we can now double click on the Recycle block and go to the Process Data tab. If we wish to give our recycle guess a better starting point, we can select the Copy from Inlet button here. All of the information from Stream 13 is then transferred to the Recycle Guest Stream, and Promax is ready to begin iterating until the inlet and outlet to the Recycle are essentially identical. Any guess given to Promax in the Recycle Guest Stream is going to be overwritten by Promax and is used only as a starting point. Now that we have solved this file, look for the next tutorial that will step through answering the questions presented on the next page in the manual.